What's up, Mentorship Freaks? It's Steve here with the Daily Dose of the Mentorship Motivator. And you see up there in the headlines, it says, if you want them to follow, you need to be a follower. Er is the key part of that entire sentence. You need to be a follower. And I don't just mean a follower to other leaders. I mean a follower to the shit that you expect them to do. That's what you need to follow. You need to follow your own code. You need to follow your own strategy, your own structure, your own discipline that you're expecting from your team. So we're going to look at this from a couple of different ways today. We're going to look at it from you leading your management team, if you have it. And then they need to also apply everything we're talking today. So this could be a conversation, something you pass on to your team or your team leader, your manager, about the way they need to operate in order for their people to follow them. Maybe you don't have a manager, so it's directly from you to your staff. If you do, this goes from you to your management, your management to your staff. So they need to live by these codes also that we're about to go over. So it's all about, and we know, leadership is always a problem. Leadership is always a solution. We know that already. That's nothing new. But we're just going to break this down for you and just call you out on some bullshit, maybe, about walking the walk, leading by example, being the tip of the freaking spear, being the first boots to hit the ground in combat and the last boots to hop back back into the chopper once the mission is accomplished or whatever the outcome was. And so how is this working? Because if you don't do that, you can't ask them to go into combat if you're not willing to go into fucking combat. You can't ask them to be on time for a meeting if you're late for a meeting. You can't tell them to prioritize and do the big things first, the big rocks first, their priorities first, if you spend half your day running around on meaningless little tasks and and tons of little tiny little pebbles and sand type activities, but you're telling your team to prioritize, but then they see you wasting time on stupid little shit. You can't tell them to stay calm and controlled and freaking smooth if you're constantly freaking the fuck out and running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You can't tell them not to waste time when you constantly are spending 15 minutes in a conversation that should last 15 seconds if you just had some clear, concise communication, which leads to you can't tell them to communicate clearly if you're confusing the shit out of them all the time by talking in 10 different directions. You can't tell them they talk too much if you're just babbling on and on about the same little tiny task all the time or sometimes even, I mean, all those are connected together, telling them about wasting time, communicating clearly, talking too much, if you're spending, sometimes those tasks that should be 15 seconds, you're getting two, three people involved. You're letting it last like it carries over to the next day, sometimes even two, three days. And it's still not like closed off that loop of a tiny little freaking pebble, a little, little grain of sand that should be taken care of. And it's not done yet because you're wasting time, not communicating clearly and not, and just talking too much. Just shut the fuck up sometimes. I guarantee you use, in a lot of situations, 75% more words than you need to freaking use. So you can't tell them also to be positive all the time. If they just see you always pissed off, always negative, where it's just infectious to them. They're not going to be positive. If they see you not being positive, they are not going to be positive. So you need to lead by example, obviously. You can't tell them that you're concerned about them and their dreams and their goals and 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 making them happy in their life and whatever they're after in life. You can't tell them that you're concerned about them if your ego overrides that all the time and everything always turns about back to you and about you and what you need and what you want. You can't go tell them you care, give a shit about them. Your ego is just totally crushing that all the time. You can't tell them to take ownership of anything if you're reverting back to what I have just recently labeled. It's a, it's a, a st- segment of human nature that I've labeled and named. It's called the AEDM, the Automatic Excuse Defense Mechanism. Everyone has it. We've all had it. It's in your blood. It's in your bones. It's in your DNA. And you need to recognize it and cut that shit. So we tell them to take ownership of stuff. But then you see the second you start either approaching someone about maybe something that didn't get done according to the high standards, that automatically, before you even finish giving me all the details, they didn't even hear the whole situation, they don't even know everything you have to say, you just start explaining it, and their automatic excuse defense mechanism jumps in and says, oh, but I never got that email, oh, no one ever responded to me, oh, I called that person, but they didn't answer their phone, oh, I never got that text, that text must not have went through, I don't remember what you're talking about, oh, I had nothing to do with that, that wasn't me, oh, that was someone else, oh, that's because this person wasn't there, they, it's an automatic, they don't even know what it's about, and they'll automatically start coming up with excuses to defend themselves because they feel like their pride, their ego is hurt. It's an automatic part of human nature that I'm telling you I've discovered in the no excuses world that we live in. The automatic excuse defense mechanism, we have named it. And 
you can't tell them to take ownership if you're if you're automatic excuse defense mechanism is popping up all the time always blaming someone else always talk saying it's someone else's fault about every situation they see that shit they will copy that shit they will freaking live by the code you live by you need to live by this code you can't tell them to work on personal development if you're not implementing the personal development you work on yourself you can go read all the personal development books in the world you want you go every morning you're going to put it on your calendar you're going to be so structured and disciplined. I'm going to read about personal development today. I'm going to work on my personal development today. So you read a book and you do nothing about it. You don't make any of the changes you've read about. You didn't work on personal development. All you did is read a fucking book. All you did is read some words on a page that someone printed out. That's all you did. If you don't implement that shit, implement it. And now we're talking about working on your personal development. So don't expect your team to work on personal development because you sent them to some workshop or you gave them a book to read or any of this other shit. Yes, we need to do that stuff. It's important. But don't expect them to implement it if you're not implementing the shit you're learning. They're just going to read it and throw that fucker right back on the shelf. And it's going to be a waste of everyone's time. Then we go back to the wasting time and the, all this other stuff. Right? It's all, this is all connected. It's all freaking connected. This is, I'm telling you, it's all connected. This is the answer to, to a lot of the problems that you might, might encounter or might be having right now. You can't tell them to make decisions and then you make all the decisions for them. As they start to make decisions, they, start, they try to figure it out on, them, on their own. You can't tell them to try and figure it out if you're not giving them the chance to figure it out and you end up crushing them, you tell them to make decisions and then you just jump in and you make the decision yourself. Or they make a decision and you override every single decision they make. Even if it's a wrong decision, let them ride that shit out sometimes. It's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it in developing them. If you're just, oh, you can't claim, oh, I want to give you the power. I want to empower you to make decisions and you just fucking crush them by either making the decision yourself or crushing the, the decision that they do make. You can't tell them to go figure it out. I, that's, I have a saying all the time. If it's something that I know I shouldn't be bothered with, I tell them, figure it out. That's it. Figure it out. Figure it out. You need to have, you need to have everything under control. Go figure it out. That's it. That's the advice I will give sometimes. Figure it out. And I am comfortable with accepting whatever consequence comes of that, whatever they might come up with that's fucked up. I will accept whatever they do end up figuring it out, but you can't go tell someone to figure out if you're not figuring out your own shit. Also, if you're not teaching them how to figure stuff out and coaching them the right way in the first place, you can't tell them to be consistent with all this stuff if you're not. You can't tell them to be coachable and expect them to be coachable if you're not coachable yourself. You just can't expect it. You can't tell them to contribute if you're not giving them the freedom to contribute or everything they contribute, you never implement anything no matter what because you just always want to be that ego that has all the ideas and don't want to implement anyone else's ideas into your vision, your dream, even if it's a good idea. So don't Ask them to contribute if you're just going to shut them down every time. Sure, they're going to come up with some stupid fucking ideas sometimes. Doesn't matter. Sometimes implement some of them stupid ideas. If it's not going to cost you too much money, too much time. It's going to be the value of letting them implement their stuff. Brendan Burchard says, people support what they create. Five words, he says, is the key to real leadership. And then he even added in only. People only support what they create. You have to let people create shit. You have to let them be part of the process. Let them feel like they're involved in shit. And listen... Even if your team doesn't see that you're not doing this stuff, like if they don't directly see you not doing it, it doesn't mean that it's not affecting them. It's still affecting them, whether consciously or subconsciously. The fu You know you didn't do this stuff. The fucking universe knows, and they're without sounding too like tree huggery kind of shit. There's, the universe knows, and it's going to send that energy to them, and they're going to not do the same stuff that you're not doing. It's just the way it works. In some way, the universe will send that energy to them, whether it's through your tonality when you're speaking to them, through the way that you're writing in your emails, the way that you're talking to them in person, the way that you're having meetings, running meetings, it will ooze out to them if you're not leading by example and doing this stuff yourself and expecting them to do it because they're not going to do this stuff. So when you're wondering, I told this idiot a hundred fucking times to do this and they're still not doing it. They're so stupid. They're so lazy. It's a millennial. You come all with these automatic excuse defense mechanisms about why stuff's not getting done. But really, this is, this is the answer to all your questions. This is the answer. You need to consciously operate in all these areas with everything you do. Operate with intention. Of course, you want to operate to dominate, but you need to operate intentionally, not react to things that happen so that eventually you'll be subconsciously operating intentionally like the, with these things, not having to always be blaming someone or not doing the things you're expecting of your team. That stuff needs to be become automatic. And you need to first intentionally make it automatic and then eventually it'll just be part of the way you do things. Of course, we know habits, all this is common, some of it's common sense, but not always applied, right? So think th this 
you're searching everywhere outward for the answer to about why your team isn't following you or your team leader. Why is your team leader not doing what you're saying? Why is their team not doing what they're saying? And you're searching everywhere for the answer for whose fault is it, again, in play becomes an automatic excuse defense mechanism. The A E D M. Just created that myself. Some clever shit right there, huh? So you're wondering, you start looking outward, you're looking everywhere for the answer, for the solution. The answer is right in front of you. It's right in your, in front of your face. It's right in your own fucking head, the answer. And that's, you need all those lame terms, practice what you preach, whatever. Lead by example. You need to be the tip of the freaking spear, the first boots on the ground. Don't expect them to go to war if you're not willing to go to war. They're not going to respect you. They're certainly not going to follow you. And they're not going to even do their simple day-to-day tasks that you think are so simple. Like, I don't get it. Why didn't they follow up with these leads? Did you follow up with your leads? Did you follow up what you're supposed to be doing? Did you do your have your discipline you're supposed to have in your day? We know leadership is always a problem. Leadership is always a solution. Lead by example. They will not follow you if you're not a follower of the shit that you're asking them to follow you with. Do it yourself. Show them that you're doing it yourself. And the universe will give, will, will spread that out to them. I'm telling you, that's just the fucking way it works. It's the answer to your problems. I will talk to you later. This is the Mentorship Motivator. No excuses.